Welcome. I'm excited about this guitar lesson. I want to teach you a little bluesy lick that you've definitely heard before and will be really fun to hear again coming out of your own playing. It sounds like this. So I want to show you how to play it, but also what's going on, why it works, what kind of chords it works over, and how to play it in a couple spots. And I do tend to get carried away, so I'm going to try to do this swiftly and show it to you over three chords and a musical example of how you can use it for jamming or composing or just helping you understand how things fit on the fretboard. So let's do it. Quick side note, my last four videos were about a more kind of philosophical creativity psychology mindset perspective artist success strategies uh stuff like this i love to talk about that um and i decided to actually keep that content going on another channel and get back to guitar lessons on this channel so if you haven't checked that stuff out check out the last four videos i'll put links to those in the description and if you did like that stuff then consider subscribing to that other channel that's going to be under my name and i'm going to switch this channel back to sound guitar lessons and keep going with the practical tactical technical fun theoretical creative inspiring actual music content on the guitar that's it let's actually talk about this lesson for today now so the exciting thing about understanding what's going on with anything we're playing, what's happening in the key, what's happening in the chords, what chord tones are we playing, what scale degrees are we playing, how does it fit anywhere and everywhere, that's really speaking the language of music. Just a simple lick like this that we've heard all over the place, a little kind of a, a funny little thing, we might have heard it in uh, this way, or this way, or the way I played it at the beginning. And if we understand what's going on, we can put it in different places. So if I'm playing a different chord, fun little ending or a lick you can play in the middle of. So what's going on here is if I think of this G chord, and if you don't know a chord like this, this big bar chord, uh, this is the root and then this is a major chord built off of it, just like an E major shape. And it's like moved up the neck and you have to bar. Um, so you could certainly play this G here, this open one, and still do these licks and play around with it. But I'm going to show it to you in this context because two of the notes on the top here are just two notes that are in this big chord. And I'll show you some diagrams as well, but I'm going to walk through just the guitar with no diagrams at first, and then I'll really write out details for you, and you'll see, and we'll get it all done nice and quickly, okay? So this is the third of this chord, and this is the root of of this G chord. And it happens to be the third string and the first string, um, just of that shape. So we're actually kind of targeting that. And up here where I started or ended, if you get there or, or start there, these two notes are also chord tones. And it's as if you're playing a G chord that's like this shape, which is just like a D shape, but moved up the neck. And if that's a lot and you're not understanding it, take it in as not needing to know the details as much as like, okay, that's, that's how I want to eventually see the fretboard. You know, that's what I want to inspire you to do right now. And then I will write out uh, some of the details that you can go back to and pause and rewatch and, and even kind of map out for yourself if you like. So on this G chord, the top note is one, two, three on fret three, fret five and fret seven. That's one, two, three of the scale that this chord comes from, or one, two, three of the chord. Okay, so I can go three, two, one, one, two, three of the G chord. And then between two and three, it's just a passing tone. So we already get that. Cool. Da, 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 da. Fun. So that's all that's happening there. The other notes are just doing the same thing off different chord tones. This is the third of the chord. And then this is the fifth of the chord. Third of the chord on fret four fifth of the chord on fret seven, both on the third string, and the in-between note in the key is fret five. So it's three, four, five of the scale that this chord comes from. If I play it with it, okay, that's what's happening there in the Brown Eyed Girl song. So now if we just play this, okay, if we wanted to break it down, we say one and three, okay, four and two, those are not chord tones, but they're just passing tones. Chromatic tones outside of the scale that are passing. And then, oh, we land on actual stable chord tones. That's why you can hold this and go dun, 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 and end on it or bum, 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 and sit there with it. 
So I know I'm kind of rapidly going through this, but I'm just trying this approach to, to it. I want to switch to another chord now. If we know the theory on the fretboard and the theory of what's happening in music, then we can really use this stuff all over the place. So if I play a C chord now, and you can play an open C chord, but if I play this C chord, that is the root here on the fifth string, and then this just barred shape or all three notes on the second, third, and fourth string on, on the fifth fret, that's like an A shape, basically, up on the third position. Um, well, these two chord tones, string four and two, string four and two on the fifth fret are chord tones that we'll see in this shape here. Chord tones. And that's the same as if we started this. Okay, so, okay, we can move down same physical shapes, just same physical shapes. And what we land on here are notes that are just in this open C chord that a lot of us know really well. So we see, oh, how oh, kind of nice we land on this, this kind of familiar place. Dun, 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 dun. I'm just kind of going into that chord and playing with that chord a little bit. But um, so that's that same thing. So if we're on a C, if we're on a G chord, and then you go to a C chord, back to G. Okay, let's also do it on D so we can get the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord of the key. One, four, five, four, one. So we might do a progression that's like four, five, one, and play this lick with it every time. Um, totally a progression that's happening in a lot of music. If you're jamming around, you can kind of target these chords in a really fun way. And again, if you're not even trying to jam or improvise, it just helps you see the fretboard. So here is the D chord in the same shape that I was playing C, this A shape, if you want to think of it that way, in the caged system. And so I'm playing this, but I actually want to think of D over here, way up here, because I want us to play this same like precisely how we played it with G. And I know I showed you two different ways to play this lick already, but um, you can play it the same way moving around uh, those top, the top string and the third string. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, if this third fret, top string, is the root of this chord, here's G, and then here's G, here's G, up here, okay, the root of that chord, then any bar chord, you can just do the same thing. So you have to find your place. But if I play a D up here, this root is D, so this is that E shape of D. Okay, so it's a D chord. Uh, Here's that same material. It's kind of the beauty of the guitar that we can move stuff around. It's all it's a it's an advantage and a setback at the same time because if we only see things that way we don't learn how to play um, the same thing in multiple places like how we moved it to other string sets, but it is hugely advantageous and we do want to take advantage of it as well. So so we might go um, G bum, 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 C D, back to G. And then for G, I'll have us do it in one other place, and I'll show you all these on a diagram as well. So if we're playing G here, well, what we want to look at is that we're going to look for the three and the one, or the five and the three, depending on where you want to start. But here's the three of G, second fret, fifth string. Here's the root of G, open G string. And then we can go up to get the same lick, okay? In other words, this fifth string on the fifth fret and this third string on the fourth fret gets that same spot that we got up here. Hear it, right? So move that down. So, and by the way, these intervals are all intervals of sixths, the sixth. If you count from the bottom one, from the lower one to the, to the upper one, you'll get six steps of the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Or down, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I know I skated over that last one, but again, I wanted to kind of inspire you. I want to give you some stuff to really chew on and, and think about. If all you get is this one on G and just kind of ponder on that, fantastic. That is really great. So, um, you know, just playing here, you could do it off A, right? Just think of this one first one. That's this first one that I showed you that's on string one and string three. Um, but if you want to take it to the next level, try it in all these various places. We have two spots for G. We have this one. And we have the same thing an octave down. And then we have one spot for C. 
And actually, you do know how to play it up here on C2 because it's the same thing we're moving around. And then we have the spot for D. Okay, so now I can really kind of play with it and make some music. So I'll do that kind of groove I was doing. Went down to G. I'll do it again. So I'm on G. Now C. Now I'll go to D. And now back to G. And I'll do the lower one. Okay? So if you have questions, let me know. If, it should, if I should be presenting less information than that, let me know. I'm happy to. Uh, but I, I just kind of want to make something that feels like a song, feels like a progression, feels like we can really um, take a little of it if it's helpful, and then also come back and, and study the same um, lesson and get more and get more and get more. So if you, you can bite off a little, great. If you want to take a little more, that's awesome too. So I've been wanting to try something. When I'm teaching in real life, I'm usually writing stuff out and talking while I'm writing and having it be kind of more organic and hands-on and, and handwritten. And uh, writing out graphics, editing in the videos after filming them is really time consuming and really hard to, to show everything that I would really want to show. So I want to try something where I'm kind of doing it in real time on a screen for you and talking at the same time. Let's see how it works. All right, so we should be recording here now, and I can write in here like this is going to be a G chord, and the one that I just showed you is on the third fret here, and these are the notes. Um, and this right here is the root. This is the fifth. This is the root. This is the third. This is the fifth, and this is the root. And I know that that's quick, but I like to kind of do this stuff organically and go over it many times. One, five, one, three, five. One, those are the chord tones of that chord shape. So if we take that chord shape, and you have to bar uh, for this. So if we take that chord shape, and let's just scoot it down. Um, so I'll just put it over here. And just pretend it's anywhere. Pretend it's on the third fret or, or wherever. So you're barring that if you want to, or we're just kind of seeing it and, and looking at it. So we know that the that this is the root here. That's the one. And then the note that is another chord tone is three over here. So if this is one, then this is two, and this is three. Okay, so those are the primary notes in the scale that you're walking up to. Okay, this right here is the chromatic tone. I'm just going to put a P there for passing tone. Okay, so it's flat three or sharp two in that spot. Okay, so this is that sound. Bum, 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 bum. One, two, passing tone three. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, so that's what I was doing. And now this here is the three of the chord. And look, here's an octave right here. I did a video that outlined the octave shape for the purpose of finding any note name on the fretboard and we need to memorize that octave shape all over the place i'll put a link to that video in the description but uh this is the three and this is the three over here and seeing that anywhere on the fretboard is really helpful so if that's three then four is right here and if you know your scale structure that helps a lot so three because we know that in a major scale three and four are always next to each other and then four and five are always a whole step apart so what's happening with the sixths and this is a passing tone here okay so that's sharp four or flat five, but really it's functioning as a passing tone. So what's happening in the scale, we'll get another color here, is that you have this sixth interval that you're playing those two at once, and then you have this sixth interval that you're playing those two at once, four and two, and then you do these two that are passing tones, and then you land on those two, or you go the opposite direction. So I hope that visual helps you. You can do that anywhere in whatever note this is right here, that's your root, right? Whatever name that is in the diagram, if it's the edge of the guitar, that's F. But let's just say that it's G if you play it over on that third fret over there. So that is what that first lick was. Let's break down that second lick in the same way. So the second lick was, the way I played it was on C. So here's our root of C here. I played like that chord shape. And of course, if you want to, you can see 
this chord shape over here as like an open C, if you want to see that. Okay, so if, oh, let's get rid of those. If this is the root, and we'll put that in parentheses because we're not playing it, here's five, here's three. Ah, just like we had here, right? So we have five and three. Uh, a whole step away from five in a key is four. Okay, so we have four, a whole step down from that. Whole step down from three is two. Okay, so we have two there. And then a half step away from four is three. So we have that situation there. And here's the root. And we can see that, okay, this is the one and this is the one. Those are an octave apart. That's another octave shape that we could start to get used to. But here we, here we are already. We have a sixth, we have a sixth, we have a sixth. These are different sixths. There's a major sixth and a minor sixth, but it doesn't matter um, if we're stick, sticking with the key and kind of outlining it. What, what I care more than seeing is it a major sixth, is it a minor sixth? That's actually way less important than seeing I see how it fits in the chord. And even more specifically, I see how it's the five and the three or the four and the two, where it's related to something specific within the chord. So um, of course, we just want to add these passing tones in here. I have the blue color now, but let's be uh, obsessively consistent. P and P, and then here we go. Sixth, 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 and sixth. Okay, so same lick, go either way with it. Um, if you break it up, you could go back to how, how I played it in the intro and hear it kind of broken up as well or play them all at once. Uh, but you'll start to hear those sounds if you play with that. Let's outline the last one. Again, this one is the same one I did on D. So as long as you treat this note as you find D on that sixth string and then you play this one, then you're ripping it on that chord, on whatever chord. Um, so you could do this off G, same one when you move this note up to uh, this bottom note, thinking off of the note C and then move it to D. You could do that on all of them, but I'm showing you multiple ways so you don't get stuck in only moving a lick around, um, if that makes sense. So last way to show you here is on the, the G chord, okay? So just like we have the G chord here, pay attention to that. We have our, I'll go with our red numbers here. Here's our root up here, parentheses root, because we're not playing it, but here's our five, and here's our three. Yes, the physical shape is different than the five and three over here and over here, but that's because of the tuning of the guitar. So the actual intervallic information is the same, the distance and the sound. So, okay, whole step down from five is four. Half step, I'm sorry, um, whole step down from three is two. And then a whole step down from two is one, so we're skipping that open that first fret and going to the open, and then a half step down from four is three. Oops, yes, three, and then that's it. Um, let me throw those passing tones in there. Okay, we have our oops, got to get used to this method. We have our five and three, we have our four and two, we have our three and one. Those are our sixth so far. You can play that, it'll sound great. Let's add those passing tones in and get that country kind of twang sound. And then here we go, there's your sixth interval, there's your sixth interval, there's your sixth interval, and there it is again. Um, four and two are passing tones as well. They're not chord tones. So we have passing tones that are in the key, passing tones that are not in the key, and then straight up chord tones that sit perfectly, chord tones that sit perfectly. All right. Okay, that's it. I just jumped in and tried this different approach I wanted to do, but I'm excited to get back to the weekly guitar lessons and to keep going with the other kind of more esoteric content on the other channel. So I hope to see you back here soon and over there as well if you're into that sort of thing. Take care and I'll see you next week.